Yeah. What up, man? What's happening yeah. with you, dog? What's up, gang? What's yeah, up, gang? Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. What's in your cup, man? Water. Okay, I knew if you was. I'm old school. I gotta drink water, homie. I gotta stay hydrated. Yeah. 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 A lot of smoke hey. outside, a lot of shit going on. I just uh, didn't see the cat come in with the, the, uh, the Dixie me? cup oh, of, of water. You want these, my sunglasses? Let me look on me. Let me look on me. Oh, man. See how they look on me. You would think I've met you like before. Ah! <laughs> what kind of glasses are those? Uh, what kind of glasses are those? Because Aviators. Aviators. Uh, they, they match your. Uh... Top Gun. All right. <laughs> I want them to see my eyes. <laughs> Top Gun. <laughs> Alive. Can't see shit outside. This is a city bad right now. Nah, that's man. That was you, you down there. It. it was a good day to wear pink. Somebody need life. I need life right now. <laughs> Dade Shit. County. What's up, it dog? Like, it looked like, um, oh, you from Dade County? Nah, you you was born in Miami, right? Hell no, Brooklyn. You <laughs> weren't born in Miami? Nah, I don't believe nothing on Google about me. Okay. Oh, <laughs> you got to switch it up then. Nah, it's a bunch of people who don't like me who wrote that shit. Oh, I got to <laughs> reset it. We got <laughs> people with <laughs> wiki mixed up, man. Nah, I'm <laughs> from Brooklyn, New York, Kings County. Oh, E, oh, we right. starting the show. I know, I know. It's just... I mean, I'm gotta... sorry, guys. Is it the show started? Which channel is my... Yeah. They got cameras on you all over, bro. This will know you too right now. Just gotta go above this. Now. Got all of them. Oh, his, his chain too big. You know, you know. See, none, 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 none of us, none of us got chains like that. So I get it. Yeah, I can't. Uh, you, don't, you don't really know how to how to mic him up. Yeah, it makes sense. It's hey, little. Man. You want to trade? This is real little. Come on, this is little. We can trade there here. Come on, nah, come on. Chain, where, you <laughs> where you get your chain? Your chain from, chain? He got what, the biggest chains. Oh, this is no baby of these. Right? Got the biggest chains over here. My chains ain't fucking with him. Look at this. Nah, these babies. Nah, I, I, we didn't see. Hey, <laughs> we got two ropes. <laughs> but you left the Smurda chain home. Come on now, dog. Go, we go, we go, need to move light. What what it do? You heard it up? You say go. Yeah, I'm a Leo. Y'all right after me. I I, I, have, I have no idea what it's called. People that runs a lot of my shit is a Virgo. They're very organized. Bro, yeah. you fuck Virgo yeah, is the best. They're very bro, you organized. mess with a, a, astrology? Of course, it's spiritual, man. I love astrology. That's not spiritual. It's that's not, not God. It's not? Astrology? What is that? It's I like don't the stars. Know. It's, it's, it's some shit people made up in my mind. It's a, no, I don't think so. I think it's personalities. It's like personalities. But it only works if you're true to yourself. No, oh, okay. So, you know, 85% of the world will be true to yourself. So it only works if you're true to yourself. If you're true to yourself, then it works. But if you're not, then you probably... The lion trying to be a Capricorn or some shit, bro. He's saying this is how he's trying to be a who knows what. <laughs> what the fuck going on with you? <laughs> but once it works, when you're being yourself, I believe. Yeah. I believe once you be yourself, it works. Hold up. Limitless. Biggest to me, cap pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. On the mission, get me up. Knowing me, I got the key. On the vision, I can trust. Trust. Limitless. Niggas send me cow pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Well, man, welcome to the pivot, bro. This is Chan. I'm RC. This is Freddie T. To our partners over at Happy Dad. Appreciate you guys, our sponsor. Happy Dad, Dad. shout out to all the fathers, you know. <laughs> <laughs> all the baby fathers. <laughs> all the baby fathers. <laughs> Bro, so, hey, man, you mentioned being true to yourself, though. What's true to Bobby Smurder? Like, when, when, you, when you feel your most um, authentic, authentic self and you're being exactly who you're supposed to be. I think can't be altered. I can't be altered at no price. So when you be authentic, your mind is always straight or you see everything clear. Once you see everything clear, it's different. You know, it's like um, we all can see clear, but if you can be bought or altered, it's like I could. It's like a dog. If I throw a dog a bone, it's gonna turn its head, right? And if I could, um, you could be just yourself at all times and not turn your head, then that's like being yourself. Like if I give you a question, you give me an answer that everybody gonna say is like motherfucker. I want to hear from you. I don't want you to go talk to your mama. Or your, like being in a relationship, right? In a relationship, your girlfriend, you ask your girlfriend, say, she gotta go ask her friends, then she gotta ask her mama. Nigga, that's not you. I done, I'm just dating your mama and your friends now. Yeah. <laughs> you feel yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Right. So it's just like that. Just be authentic, like be yourself. You stood tall for your man, Rowdy, right? Is that being yourself and being straightforward? It could have been Rowdy, it could have been anybody, anybody on my team at that moment. So any, anybody on my team or anybody that I go with or anybody I'm with, I go 100 with. So we leave the, we come together, we're gonna leave together. Right. 
And uh, does that also involve being comfortable in your skin? Like today, in New York, Smokey is a motherfucker. He's like nasty. He look like the Avengers outside. Right. You know, I'm thinking, what's his name? Velvet? What's, what's the monster name again? From Avenger? He's talking about... Um, Delmas? What's his no, name? Thanos. Thanos. I think yeah. he about to come out the sky on some shit. Yeah. I don't want the fuck <laughs> going say, on. You say Delmas? I know who the hell is Delmas. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> He's motherfucking about to come out the sky. <laughs> and even with that, being comfortable, right? And confident. Today you can wear pink, but about a week ago oh, in yeah. Miami, you're flexing on the beach where it was sunny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being yourself. And even in your, your videos, and you know, I've read some stuff where people say, Shmurda, wow, he loose, he doing his thing. Like, is that just all part of the upbringing? Yeah, I'm Jamaican, so we, we, we came up wild in Brooklyn. We came up wild. But I was also just always smart, so that's what happened. I'm like a, a sweet and sour patch. I go in and out of moods whenever I feel, so I'm like, like, it depends on, how would I say it? It depends on the environment sometimes. Right. Like, I'll be focused on this. So if I'm in this environment, my mind is focused on this. If I'm in this environment, I'm like this and this. So I kind of, like, growing up, we was wild. We was like, it was like the jungle. It was Brooklyn, you know what right. I'm saying? And, you know, on top of cars, on top of buildings, jump buildings, buildings, a whole bunch of dumb shit. And growing up out of it, like, um, in a different environments now. So I always like to conquer. It's just like conquering certain things. So I'm conquering my mind now. Like I did all the physical thing tests right now. It's conquering my mind, behaviors, work, tasks, just like that. And as you continue to move forward and grow, you mentioned about music mm -hmm. and how it affects kids, children, the state of hip hop. You also mentioned, um, you know, not necessarily being as heavy into the hip hop space and you catch it when you catch um, it? Yeah, I'm not really heavy into the hip hop space right now. I make hip hop music, but the the thing is, it's like, it's not viral no more to me. It's not real no more. Everybody's just talking about everything. You got like, like these good people, like I wanna say, I would say good civilians, you know, they're rapping now, they got tattoos, they put tattoos on their face. They put, um, they buy a million, couple million views. And then now they're influencing these kids to make the kids think that this, this. And I got nephews, I got nieces. I, when I left, when I went to jail, they was young, they were five, six, now they're 12, 13. They're growing up into this music. They're listening to this music. And then half these guys, I'm like, no, they're not it. Right. <laughs> like, like <laughs> the shit that they talking about, and they're influencing you guys to do and catch five years or 10 years after you, you know, this and that. These guys are on yachts and doing this and that. But I'm gonna tell you that I'm on yachts and doing this and that. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna tell you the real shit. Right. I ain't gonna lie to you, you know what I'm saying? These motherfuckers on yachts getting, you know what I'm saying? They balls licked and shit like that. <laughs> These motherfuckers not in no drug spots and doing stuff like that, okay? <laughs> you need to stop listening to these guys and then they didn't kind of grow up like that neither, I feel. You know what I'm saying? It's like, even to hip hop nowadays, when I hear female rappers, right? I don't even listen to female rappers. They talking about shooting and drilling. I'm like, I don't want to hear that shit. It's bullshit. Come on. Yep. Come on. And I'm a person, I like real, authentic things. That's what makes my spirit jump. So it's not that I'm being disrespectful, it's just not for me. Right. You know what I'm sense. saying? I need something real that's, that, that's what makes me go. Because I'm like, yo, this is real, this really happened, this could really that, and then he overcame this and this and this, this and that, so I can really catch a, like a, a spirit, I can get energy off of it. Other shit, I'm like, man, this shit's some fucking boo boo clown shit. It just look good. <laughs> it sound good. Get that shit out of here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that shit off the block. Nigga, I'm from Brooklyn. You better take that shit off the block somewhere. <laughs> but the, the, but that, that's why it gets to you, because you done been out there. You, done, you just said, I got out of jail. And now I've heard it you talk about like, it before. Like to me, the difference is nowadays, shit don't be viral, it be hacked. Mm. If you ask me, I'm like, these motherfuckers got to be paying for this shit, because this is no way who the fuck is listening to this dumb shit. But you know, <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> but you know the label, you know how this shit go. But you know, it's, 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 it's certain different things. You got authentic music, like back in the days. You got commercial music, and you got authentic music. We listened to DMX growing up in the streets. And it was so authentic that they had to take it and put it on the radios. Mm. You understand? Nowadays, they just be paying for all this other shit on the radio. They ain't trying to hear that shit. Can it be fixed? Or it's too far gone now. Music too far gone now. Rap. Yo, listen, man. They got, I don't know what the fuck going on. Every time I go on my I'm like, I see girls talking about shooting every day. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> She's like, yeah, pop up on that bitch. What the, ah, ah, ah. And when you see me, it's smoke. <laughs> the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Man, shut your ass up. <laughs> That's wild. Hey. It's true, so. But for 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 you for <laughs> for you, what is music supposed to be though? Because we've Real. heard we but we've heard other rappers, entertainers say that 
a lot of rappers are actors, that they're portraying an image that's not truly mm. them, but they seem to accept that. Why Why for you is it's that something that you say you can't vibe it's to? it's hacked. It's pushed in our faces. It's bullshit. It's bullshit! It's bullshit, I tell you! <laughs> <laughs> but, but like when you, when you see dudes like that, that you feel like you say you're telling your nieces and your nephews that that's not, don't buy into that sort of lifestyle because while you're doing five to ten, They'll be on their yachts and they'll be doing those things. I heard somebody the other day, right? It was this rapper. And we was talking. He's like, yo, when he got this deal, he had like four number ones on this, that, this, that. He was going back and forth to the trap, right? And I said, this is crazy. I said, how old are you? You're like 20-something. By the time I was 19, in the first inch that they gave me out, I was I was gone. I was going like, no, tomorrow. You couldn't bring me back. You couldn't pay me to go back to the trap. You crazy? You <laughs> crazy? <laughs> <laughs> we had to jump out the windows, go take the shit all out like you crazy. Go back away. You know what I'm saying? So it's the mind state that shows me like, if you just begin certain things, you get, oh, this is amazing. And then, you know, in the streets, I grew up in the streets, I was on the corners, I was four, you know, and I grew up amongst drug dealers. My drug dealers, my babysitters, so I seen a lot of things early. I didn't have like a really childhood. I got, it was like really mature. You know what I'm saying? For my childhood, like a lot of drugs, money, this, that, um, calculations, this whole bunch of stuff. And business, I was learning business. And when I grew up and I turned 19 and I got into, to get out the hood and um, able to meet these, um, so much individuals to put my money here, there, 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 there. And even just show me so much other stuff like building businesses, um, tax forms, all types of shit that, of course I heard about in the hood, but it's different when you're seeing it and you're doing it, you know what I'm saying? And they showed me this and they showed me that. And um, the first chance I got out, I stood the fuck out. I didn't stay for clout to be like, I don't need no clout. I know the trouble. I know the, I know the, I know the um the back end of it. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these motherfuckers don't know the back end of it. So it's cool to talk about it, or always talking about your brother or your friends or the cousins. I ain't nobody wanna hear that shit. What the fuck you do? Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause you can't be telling me to do some shit that won't rap some shit. Right. And I'm outside doing this, but you ain't never lived it. Yeah. Right. And then now you're 30 or 20 something trying to live it. It don't mix, it don't add up. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to be 20 something, 30 something, trying to live it. It's like, y'all still doing this? Yeah. We didn't do that when we were like 12, 13, 14. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I, can't, I can't be down with that shit. Do you go back and try to explain that to him? I go to the juveniles all the time. So yeah. I was going to go to the juvenile yesterday, but I missed it. I sent him a bunch of food and stuff. I sent him like 20 boxes of pizza, this and that. And I got to go see them when the 12? The 12. So I go in and out to juveniles and I talk to the juveniles all the time. And then when I come, they love it when I come, you know what I'm saying? Because when, I, when I'm not there, they be cutting each other, doing a whole bunch of shit. And when I come and I let them know, like, yo, I was here. So if I could do this, I haven't had a platinum record out since 2014. I've made over $4 or $5 million. Dollars. I've done did this, I have businesses, I have this and that. It's about being a businessman. And when I tell them this and I tell them how I did it, I'm gonna tell you how I did it. I got residual income every day. I mean, every month sitting on my ass. I got this and that that I set up. Now, um, when I tell them that this is possible, it's different because when they look at it, it's only like two people, if you're in the industry, if you think about it, me and Mike Tyson, I've been through the juveniles really in um, New York and this and that, and nobody came back and talked to them. Yeah. Everybody goes to the prisons. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying you gotta start from the kids first. Right. My whole thing is prevention before care. Mm -hmm. So before we, they even turn to the adults because 60, 40% of the um, prisons start in juvenile and graduate. Mm -hmm. Like I was one of those, you know what I'm saying? And when I went there, I seen a lot of the people that I was in juvenile with graduate to the prisons and stuff like that. Right. And and being being a youth, you know, being a child, you know, coming up in certain hoods, you know, you're influenced by a lot of things. You know, you see a whole lot of shit that can be too easy to do you. things like the hallway smell like piss. And right, right. It's but just nasty. With that, you know, and definitely coming up in Brooklyn, you guys have a, a rich history and tradition of hip hop. A lot of legends in the game. What was your biggest influence to lead you throughout your journey in music? Well, you know I love Diddy because he's a party vibe. Um, Diddy, I gotta give some to Jay for businesses. I love his businesses aspect. Dr. Dre, Diddy, Dr. Dre, and Jay. Jay. And Birdman. Nobody gives yeah. it. I don't, I don't feel like Birdman don't get enough respect. And Master P. Yeah. That's the big one. Also in, Snoop Dogg, I'm sorry. Yeah. Snoop, Snoop Dogg is yeah. bossing like a motherfucker right now. Yeah. That's his Instagram. Mm -hmm. Also yeah. Snoop Dogg. I actually want to get to that with you. Um, from the outside looking in, because your personality is so, like, it's so vibrant, right? And, and you see it right away. 
what I've learned in these 15 to 20 minutes is you're really intelligent. And that intelligence seems to come from... Don't be from, telling nobody that. My bad, dog. People start asking me questions. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Forgive me. And, and, and it seems like that's come, that experience has, I mean, that wisdom has come from experience. Yes, a lot. You know, you mentioned business. Now, the way we got connected to you, if they would have told me that that's someone you frequently speak to, I'd have been like, hell no. Ain't no way. Right? And he uses this thing called country dump. Right? He says people listen to him talk and listen to that he has fun and he makes jokes and they underestimate his intelligence. The smartest people make jokes all the time because you're too smart. So you just be bored so you make jokes. You're like, do you see this shit? Nobody else see this shit? You see shit ahead of time when you're smart. Right. So sometimes when you see shit ahead of time when you're smart, you become lonely a lot, you know? And not lonely as in physically, lonely as in mentally because it's like you'll be around a bunch of your peers probably growing. Like me, I grew up around a bunch of peers and sometimes Motherfuckers wouldn't know what I talk about, and I'll make a joke, and then they'll see you later, and I'll be like, I told you that like 20 minutes ago, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. So, you know, it just, you know, sometimes um, they told me when you become like individually smart, sometimes even every tribe you come from, every family you come from, place you come out, you shoot up, and then sometimes, you know, like a rocket, a lot of things get um, left. So, like, the mentals don't add up no more, shit like that. So, sometimes you become a little lonely. You but not, you be around a whole bunch of people, though. You would seem fast to me, and not like fast, like when your mom would be like, don't be hanging around that fast ASS girl, but like fast in the sense that you said you grew up and your babysitter was on the block, right? And so a lot of times if you're in that environment, you're hanging with people that are older than you. And so you mentioned telling jokes to my peers, it's because mentally I'm faster than they are. When you deal with dudes now who are your age, who haven't been through some of the things that you've been through from your block. Frustration. What are some, what, yeah. It, was, it used to be frustration. I tell my assistant all the time, it used to be frustration, but then I remember an older female told me, she said, every time I see you, you got a lot of new guys working with you. I said, listen, sometimes McDonald's, McDonald's been there for years, but the work has always changed. Because as you said, a lot of people can't keep up. They want to chill, they want to do this. And I grew up around older people where it's like, work, man, like, yeah, I'm bugging. I want, you know what I'm saying? I'm not want to be up in no club unless they pay me to be up in the club. <laughs> you feel me, baby? I would not be up in no, nah, nah, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? So as he said, it's like, grow, you, you're right. You're right. I be around a lot of older people. I don't be around people my age. Bro, your energy. Uh, we heard you coming before you even saw you. You know what I'm saying? We all know your damn voice. We knew it was you. We heard you coming, but like you're saying, on socials, every time that energy you bring, but you done been through some shit. Yeah. Like you, and you even, when you, how you talk about jail, bro? Six away? And you talk about that shit like you ran to McDonald's for a quick second. Exactly. Like, the way you talk, the way you are, like, how did you not let your past affect what, your daddy, what, he got 120 years? Like, you start reading about it, bro, and what you are, I would not think it came from what you've been through. Um, was being strong. Um, I ain't had nobody to cry to. There's nobody I had, I had like when I was outside, I was the youngest and you on the road to big boys, you gotta be you gotta be tough. And then it was just I guess where I grew up at, I was already like an adventurous kid and it was like a crazy spot. So that was on top of everything and then you know, just just going through everything, it's either you gonna smile or cry. You know what I'm saying? We don't go through it regardless of you're going to smile or cry, and then you ain't supposed to let nothing break you. I feel like everything is a learning lesson to make you stronger for something. But it, it depends on how you think about things. You know, some people see how they see stuff through um, glasses. Somebody might see a cup halfway empty. Some people see a cup like it was an investment. We could fill it up more. We could right. put more stuff in it. You know what I'm saying? Some people are like, ah, fuck it. You know what I mean? So just on how you visual things, I feel like. Every time I visual things, every time I wake up, it's a blessing. I got so much friends that pass. I'm taking care of their kids when they're not there because it's like, I mean, they're not there. So it's like when they when they call for their father, they call their uncle. You know what I'm saying? They pop not there to pick up. So I got to pick up all the time. You know what I'm saying? Every time my nephew or son calls, so I got to do a little extra work and stuff like that. So it's like oh, oh, every little thing I take, I take appreciation of. Right. I take appreciation of everything. I got friends that's got 98 to life and 53 to life that I was, my co-deans that we get suspended in first grade with. And when we turned 20, he was getting 53, and I was getting 70 years, and shit was crazy, you know? And I'm seeing their daughters and then their sons and shit like that. So it was like, appreciation through life. Every time I get up, I appreciate the breath of life. Appreciation is amazing. Perception is a whole nother thing, especially in the environment. Woo, that's, that's that we're a motherfucker. In. You know, social media, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, we got this thing on the show, right? <clears throat> we, we dropped the show, Just we were just chopping it up at the crib. And, um, 
I was talking about my grandmother, and I cried. So we got this thing on the show. Actually, they started the shit. The last one that cried on the show, the softest one on the show. But that's perception, right? Like, nah, but some I people talk call about it, my grandmother. I start crying too. I don't want to talk about my grandmother. So, but yeah, saying? nah, I don't want to talk there. about grandies. I start breaking I down too. That shit fucked me up. So that shit raised me. me. But in your bed, you know, trying to keep that face and be tough. And even in the industry, sometimes you got to keep that that face. But if it's real, it's real. It's gonna happen naturally. Were there any nights when you were there doing your last six years? Did you cry? You smile uh, yeah, I lost people in there. I lost people in there. I had people sick on COVID. I couldn't do nothing with being in the cell. I remember last time I cried, I lost my little bro, um, one of my little bros in there. And it was right before I came home. And, and they got called and they said he died. And I'm like, oh my God. And I was having a good day. I was having a good ass day and I just went inside. And I went inside and I, I talked to my wife for like three days, but my bro, they knew something was up. They're like, oh, I'm like, they see me, I'm like, oh, I was tense. I'm like, I'm good. And I was like, yo, this is a trick right now because I'm about to go home. I ain't go outside for three days because I said, if a motherfucker probably say something, then there's miscommunication and oh, hell no. You know what I'm saying? I said, wait, hold on now. And I had to take it in breath and I had to sit there. I sat there and I cried for three days. And then I came outside and I was like, all right, this, 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 that, and the third, I had to get myself together. What are the things that you look most forward to when you was, you know, halfway done or just about to come home? Was it like family, friends, fan base, you know, getting back to the money, making music again? Like, what were some of your priorities? Priorities was definitely family, friends, um, the fans, three Fs, family, friends, and the fan, fan base. <laughs> and the after was just work, getting on my work in order, just like building all. Cause when I was sitting there, the thing with it, while I was doing the jet, I was reading, I was studying the industry. I was reading everything. I was writing. I was I was just studying my businesses, and I just wanted to get my business in order when I get home. So I was making like five year plans, mm -hmm. and I'm still in the midst of my five year plans. A lot of things are going. You know, I'm like 26, 27 months home. Mm -hmm. Five years about so was like 60 months or some shit. So I still got a couple more months, you know. And I was just making plans: 36 month plans, five year plans, and overall 10 year plans. What epic? You know, did you feel like a prisoner in that deal? I don't want to talk about it. Okay. I don't even want to talk that. about it. I don't even want to say nothing. But they're going to say something. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you know, it's like, um, I'll keep it short and sweet. Because that's part of the it's, business it's, plan. It's like, a, it's like a girlfriend, you know? You have a girlfriend, you have a bad breakup. You know how girls are. That's it. I keep it simple like that. Yeah. Bro, when you you want to leave, you want to be free, you know? Shawty went, ah, oh my God, you know, those things happen. <laughs> that what they say? Yeah, but I still got love for them. Wow. That what the girls say though, ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you talking about going, going, going uptown for what, six years. Bro, it's right when you blew up. I was four months, it was four months. I was, I was, uh, got locked up December 17th and I signed July 17th. So like when the world knew you, then you put away. Like I don't want to say regret. I hate the word regret, but like, nah, do you it, look back at it like, God damn? Because nah, you said I made millions, but the millions could have been nah, tripled and doubled. Nah, nah, nah. I feel like um, it wouldn't have been nothing. Probably it'd have been life, prison. So I feel like the six years sometimes saved me. Like, I got smart. I got so smart in jail. The thing is that when I went to jail, I met this guy, and I met this guy. And he told me something that I can never let people define me. So I was like the smartest, stupidest motherfucker. I would have the smart ass plan, but I had an anger issue when I was young. And my anger issue was very bad. So it was like, I was like it was like the Hulk. I'd be like Ben, like the Hulk. I'd be the nicest motherfucker on earth. But when I get mad, I gotta be restrained. Mm -hmm. And then I can't be talked to none of that. So that was the thing. And like my attitude was like very, very nasty when I got mad. So. I had to start making people um, define my personality. Like, you know, when, but when I was young, it was like, if you be an asshole, I'm gonna be an asshole. I'm gonna be an even bigger dickhead. No, if you be an asshole, I'm out. You're gonna be sitting here mad by yourself, stupid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the fuck out of here. <laughs> I'm gonna be sitting here mad with you, dickhead. No, I'm going, you know? <laughs> After that, I stayed out of trouble. I learned the trick. That used to keep me so much trouble. Cause I'll be so smart. I always make it right here, and then it'd be boom. Some stupid shit had just happened. I got to do some crazy shit. 
So that's what I learned to leave. I learned how to walk away. I learned how to get the fuck out of here. I learned how to stop staying away from places. I learned how to think ahead of time. Like, mm -hmm. all right, I find out if I'm always over there and I'm, I'm always getting in trouble when I'm over, around these type of people, but guess what? I'm not going around this crowd because there's always going to be a stupid motherfucker. There's always going to be a stupid person that's going to do some dumb shit. I'm not with it. I'm not, you know what? I'm going. So I don't even put myself in around crowds. And even if I'm in a crowd, if somebody be an asshole to you, just be nice back to them. It make them look more like, a, they make them feel more like a dickhead. <laughs> but, for, but for you, bro, like you mentioned graduating, right? People from, you know, cats from, from the juvie graduate to prison. Yes. A lot of time, that's the story, though. They, they're Majority in juvie. Majority of them do because they start, they get these years, 10 years, 15, and then you got to go to prison once you're at a certain age. A lot of times, that's the rest of their life, right? You see people that end up following that path and they die in prison. You seem to have said, hell no, that's not. I see so many people not. die in prison. You seem to be like, hell no, that's not where I'm going to die. What made that switch flip for you where you say, okay, something needs to change or that is where I'm going to end up? The older guys, I had these older guys around me. Um, I had this older kingpin guy, and his name is um, Fat Cat. Nicholas Fat Cat, Lorenzo. And he told me, he's like, Bobby, he's like, Bobby, you like the smartest, dumbest motherfucker I ever met. I said, why you say that? He said, you always do some smart shit and then you let somebody throw you off your game. You always let somebody trick you out your spot. And that's what they're going to do if they know that that's your, your, your target. That's your, yeah, I'm saying that was my, that was my button. Everybody had a weakness. I had the, I don't tolerate disrespect shit. But then I started learning people disrespecting themselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cause I, 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 if you got to alter reality to feel a certain way or anything, once you start altering reality, talking some bullshit, I'm not even listening to you no more. How do you do this? I learned to not give people power over me. How do you do the Bobby Smurder thing? The authentic, I'm fun, I'm having a good time. I can break into a dance at any second. My roots is Jamaican, you know how we do. How do you do that? And then you bottle that dude up and sit with CEOs, sit with dudes who can own one Vanderbilt and have those conversations where you keep building your portfolio. Because you talked about being authentic, right? That you can't throw me no ball. Andrew dances a little. <laughs> 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 well, I'm not gonna lie. When I was growing up, I used to be in a lot of trouble, but I used to have a lot of special treatment when I was growing up. Like the principals, everybody loved me, the guidance counselors. When it wilds, my wild is like fun wild, positive wild. It's like positive, fun thing. I'm always on fun time, I'm always on building, I'm always on growing, light, enlightenment, righteous things. So the things that Andrew does and stuff like that, I'm, I'd be amazed. Like the right, like that shit is like legally fucking drug dealing. <laughs> it's legally drug dealing, the fucking building buildings and shit. That's like the most genius thing I would like think about. Think about it. everybody needs a place to be. Everybody needs a place to work. Everybody needs a place to do something, right? Yeah. Land. He's the, one of the biggest landlords in fucking New York City, right? And then I sit there and I, I hear about the projects he has. He has. These companies in there, you got Starbucks in there, you got train stations, mother <laughs> motherfucking train stations coming through this shit. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's some genius shit. Yeah. And then I sat there and I remember growing up under drug dealers and watched them how they plan a whole hood together and whole hoods. And I said, damn, if you put your mind to this, what the fuck you could become? You ain't never intimidated in them room? I, I love it. I'm just like a nah, I'm like a sponge. I ask questions all, all day, everything. You ever uh, see yourself writing a book? I know you you announced that, uh, what was it, June 2nd? Dude, no, well, last Wednesday we just started writing. Autobiography. Four hours a day. It's gonna be like four hours a day, uh, three days a week. Who's writing it with you? My guy named Masha. Take us through that four hour session. How does it work? My dog come in with a real cup of ice water too, though. I gotta stay hydrated. That's all I drink all day, water. I ain't never had a cavity. You drink? <laughs> no, I don't drink. I drink occasionally. Special occasion? Yeah. Do you eat candy? No. I you say candy. you never had a cavity. I hate candy. Really? Yeah. I gotta eat it like once in a while when I need sugar. You know what, man? You're an enigma. What's an enigma? Enigma is when you think you can have something, a person, this isn't in a human form, you think you have it figured out. You have a perception from the outside and the behaviors seem the same, the characteristics seem the same, but the actual fruit and the foundation is totally different. It's almost as when I look at you, I'm like, oh yeah, like you say, dude's wild or, hey, but you're like, nah, my wildness is positive. It's about building, it's about these things. Yeah. Where a lot of times it's like, and kind of early, like you're talking about like dudes be on some clown stuff. 
because that's the imitators. So the thing with people don't understand is the imitators. The imitators see this, and then you can't imitate, because when you imitate, you don't know the whole ins and outs. As you say, you don't know the whole foundation. Yeah. You understand? If you don't know how the foundation, I could try to be you, but I don't know what to do when I get to step seven or eight. You understand? Yeah. And that's what happens with a lot of this rap shit. You know what I'm saying? People imitate the lifestyle of the the guy in the hood, the righteous one in the hood, and then they seen it growing up. They from the hood, they seen it play being on the block, so they go to these labels, you know, imitate to them, this, that. They put a whole bunch of money behind them, this, that. And then now you got a fucking imitator running the world doing this because he's on this platform. Because mm -hmm. he sit on this platform where everybody's listening. Once they heard, that's the platform. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's stuff like that. But it's just imitators. You gotta know the difference. I know the difference between them. When you're sitting in those sessions, Bobby, and you're thinking about your life. You're like, cause a lot of times, like I've heard people who've written books about themselves and they said there were traumas that they had to explain or traumas that, that they had to relive. What do you feel like that process is gonna be for you? I think that's when I drink. <laughs> 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 I had to take a shot when I'm writing. So um, I remember they told me, um, it told me it takes like a year to write a book, actually. It told me it takes a year to write a book with a certain amount of hours a day. So I'm doing like four hours a day now. I'm mm -hmm. um, trying to cut it down. But actually, it's really, actually more, you know? And I remember they told me that we got to do 20 of the most traumatizing, craziest stories you think of your lifetime from young to your age. So I just broke it up in like um, 28. So I broke it up in like seven, from one to seven, I pick five situations from seven to 14. I pick five situations from 14 to 21 and 21 to 28 and right. stuff like that. And I just went going through all of them. I ain't go through all of them yet. We still on one to seven right now. I know as I get, as right. you get thing, I'm gonna need some more shots. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, do you ever expect, or how do you expect to feel after that? Because sitting here listening to you, bro, I feel like you should be celebrated more. You're actually a success story to be in the position that you're in with some of the positions you were put in growing up, with some of the trauma, with some of the, the connections, the relationships, the friendships you've had. And then now, as you're telling those stories, you'll be telling them from the other side, though, from the side of understanding, I'm not going to spend my life in prison. I'm not going to. I did that. I mean, I'm not the prison, but I did the prison all that. I know yeah. what you're saying. No, I'm saying like that now, though. Is there any pride, I guess, in knowing I don't, I don't, that's one thing I stay away from. I'm scared of that. I do not want that disease, pride disease. I always want to be myself. I always want to be honest. I always want to be vulnerable. I always want to be myself. I'm scared of pride. I know pride is a dangerous disease in that, that fucks people up from seeing the truth and being reality, alters reality and shit like that. That's one disease I do not want. I do not want pride. Like, I'm good with that shit. I just want to be myself and be honest. And either you like it or not, whoever gonna like it, whoever gonna like it, whoever don't like it, don't like it. So when you know somebody like it, it's real. So I'd rather it be 100 girls, right? And all the girls, 98 girls said they want a guy to do this. And I'm not doing that shit. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so the two girls or the one girl that do like it, I get them everything in the world because I know it's real. I know she love me for me, not for, I got to pretend and then do all this other shit and I'll be tired and motherfucker, fuck that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's too much. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you brought up the girls. Because I read somewhere you said, you said you was a sex addict. Was. <laughs> what, what does that was. even mean? What, bro? Was. Everybody loves Are sex. Are you reformed? Like, what's an addict? I reformed. I went, I went celibate. I went celibate for like, uh, it's supposed to be 90 days, but I did 46. <laughs> Isn't that still part of the addiction? I, I made it a little halfway yeah. over, you know? <laughs> like, like 51%, 55. <laughs> I don't want the contract. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I don't believe that, bro. Everybody likes sex. I like sex. I don't make you an means you enjoy it. Nah, I, I almost had twins this last year, December, with a female that it wasn't, it wasn't been, um, it wasn't, how would I say is emotionally beneficial. It wasn't financially beneficial <laughs> and mentally beneficial. It drove my black ass crazy. <laughs> 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 you know we're on the topic. I, I, I got a couple, brother. Because I heard another story about a tongue ring. 
I got to know. You said it ruined, your, you ruined the sex life. I, I don't uh, know how a tongue ring could ruin sex, your sex life. She cut me. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of ring did she have on? Um, I think it was the snake eyes. But you know, they be having a whole bunch of shit. I wasn't really looking. It was just something shining in that mother. Then I see blood on the floor and blood. It was this blood gushing. I like, ah, what is touching? Like, ah. <laughs> get a ride. Get the soft one. <laughs> 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 hey, yeah, you might have a problem, brother. <laughs> I, was, I was scared. We said, "Oh, tell." Oh my God! You know, and she was just, it was, she was fucked up, man. Was a, woo! <laughs> See what's up? <laughs> so was it was it the too much sex that drove to the celibacy, or the healing process? She was pregnant, and she was trying to abortion. That she was scared. I was like, what? She like, we having twins and she hung up on me. And then, you ever got, a girl ever called you to say you having twins and just you ain't get no call back for a month? Imagine, I didn't know what to do. I was drinking. I was doing what I was drinking. Oh my gosh. Yo, see if they got the money right there too. We got to hurry and close this deal. We got <laughs> twins. Oh my God. That's two of the motherfuckers. That's <laughs> two. <laughs> She ain't even said what. She said she keep them both. <laughs> you know, you, you, you know the way it works. If you keep it, you got to keep both. You don't get to. You don't get to choose one, Bobby. Like that's the way it works. For for. So I got two and her. Oh God, that's a three piece. <laughs> that's a three piece. <laughs> I was out of it. I went and got a reverend all types of shit. I went. I went to the. I went and got a pastor all types of shit. I started going to get my pastor. I got a pastor everything. I went and got a pastor. What'd you get the pastor for? To prepare to be a dad? A no, father? No, to, um, he told me I got sex demons and I'm a sex addict. He told me I need to stop and go celibate. And then I went celibate for like 46 days. How did that help you? How did that, how was that process? Um, <laughs> about a year ago, I finally came in. I don't try to talk to him, you know? <laughs> <laughs> how you <do> <laughs> How you <laughs> You know? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, wild imagination. <laughs> it's about time, Chan. Our partners at DraftKings finally said we're going to give RC some shine. They want to talk about UFC 290. There you go. They got the featherweight goat showing up, right? We got the Mexican champ. And it is going to be a great fight week for International Fight Week in Las Vegas. Mm. If anybody on DraftKings signs up, places any $5 bet, they can get $150 in bonus bets. And just like the bonuses Dana hands out when somebody get put to sleep. And you know what, bro? Yeah, I know I love same game parlays, but we swinging the UFC. Same fight parlays. Hope y'all know about it. Y'all know I love me a parlay. Bro. <laughs> Number of rounds, method of victory, combine those, and have even bigger payouts. I love it. I know what you love, and I don't know much about UFC, but I know how to grab my mobile device and find DraftKings Sportsbook and put my play in. That's what I'm going to do. And remember, anyone signing up for DraftKings using the code word PIVOT, place a $5 bet, and you get $150 in bonus bets. DraftKings, it makes watching the fights so much more fun. How did you make it six years in prison? The female CEOs were cool with me, but the, the guy CEOs didn't like me too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm saying like some of them. <laughs> I'm saying like you said, when you say the female CEOs was cool, were they that cool with you? Oh, on the visit, they let me go on the visit. You know, okay. on the visit, I did let me do my thing. You know, they let me do my thing sometimes. Didn't you have some trouble with a visit, a visit where somebody, yeah, like a crazy fan, a crazy fan, or something like tried to? No, they ain't trying to bring it up. It was okay. in the place already, okay. and then. The guys had miscommunication, thought that I was telling her, like, yo, you got to leave. 
know what I'm saying? Luckily, my mother was outside. She was coming in, and I thought it was my mother. So every time I used to go go down, I used to see a bunch of fans all the time. And I'd go down, and I'd say hi to them, because, you know, I wouldn't be disrespecting my fan. I ain't going to just, oh, I'm like, yo, love. They might always come on my eye. I'm like, yo, I know love, 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 but you got to leave. You know what I'm saying? I got to get my visit today. I, I love this and that. So when I was leaving, I remember I was leaving, they caught a knife in the back, and they tried to say that she gave it to me. I said, like, oh, shit. I said, that's my fan. You going to do that? <laughs> I said, yeah, I fucked up. <laughs> that was fucked up. That got to be scary, though, to, like, almost scary and flattering that you're doing your time. And it's scary that you'd be put in that position, but that people loved you so much, man, that that was part of their day, that that was part of, like, I'm here to see family or I'm here to just see him, and you could actually still brighten people's day. Yeah, cause I'll, I'll come down 9, 8 in the morning, I'm like, damn, she said she coming at 3. I'm like, shorty said she coming at 3. It's 9 o'clock in the morning. And I just, I'll, I'll be down there, and I'll see people. I'm like, where my visit at? They be like, right there. Oh, who the fuck is that? <laughs> they be like, ah, I'm a fan. I'm like, I'm so wait, tell me, they would let fans through to visit you? They wouldn't know they was fans. And then, then they started making me a list after like a year and a half. After the the um the, the scap incident happened, they started giving me a list of people. They don't put you in prison remember, under the name Bobby Smurder, though. Huh? They no, don't. no, I killed Polar. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. So they'll like, so Google people me, they'll Google me, okay, and then go on. Yeah. I remember one time a GQ guy came to visit me to um for an interview and they just kicked him out. I was I was I felt so bad for him. They just kicked him out. They're like, get the fuck out of here. I said, no, it's GQ, I don't do that. <laughs> it was crazy. So the reason you a lot of those fans came down there is your 2014 hit. Yes. You platinum hot nigga, you know, with number one on the rap chart, number six overall billboard, right? Can you do it again? Pride aside, well, you will say Will I do it again? Yeah, will you do will it? Will he do it again? Who knows? So what's the nah, process I'm gonna do it again. Now? I'm going to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> of course I'm going to do that motherfucker again. <laughs> <laughs> didn't it cost like $20 to make, though? Like, how that was $20 to make, but a whole lot of marketing that I didn't know about before. But yeah, it was good. It was great. It was viral. That's, that, that is return on investment. It was really viral. It was good viral. Yeah. Yes, it, yes. That, that, and hot, I still get paid to this day for those things. You know, it pays bills. It pays, it pays good bills, stuff like that. So for you, that, that's not a hack, though. That's viral. Cause you that's talk viral. Right. Back in the day, it was viral. Nowadays, everything be hacked now. I don't know what the fuck going on. But pivoting back to what we were talking about earlier, you know, uh, the energy and, and creativity and where you are now in your head with music. How do you find those creative ideas to tap back into a, to, to find another hot nigga? I don't want to make a next hot nigga. I don't ever want to do the same thing over. I want to create something new and bigger and evolve. I want to do something better. I don't want the fans to be stuck on hot nigga neither. I want them to see more. I want them to um, evolve. I want them to have open their ears. Like right now, I see a lot of drill going on. I'm like, yo, I'm not doing no drill. Drill came out when I, I was in juvenile. <laughs> I was 18. <laughs> I'm not doing that, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's just like, that's like being 2000, being in 2000 and seeing somebody break dance on the corner. Yeah. And they trying to tell me it's break dance. It's hacked. I don't want to hear that shit. That shit hacked. Anything with drill, they just pick it up and put it in the system and put a bunch of numbers behind that shit. I, I do not do drill. I'm saying so when, I create a new sound. So, that, so that's my that's my question for you. It seemed like the the first big one was organic. Like that was like you that's were just organic. you yeah like you were just being you. Like you even said the marketing and stuff behind it. You didn't necessarily understand that at the time. Yeah. But in making it twenty dollars, like this is just me being me. Like the the light went on in the studio. It might have been small like a closet, but I made it happen. Mm -hmm. It's different for you now. Yeah. You know, because of that hit, because of your story, because of the personality, people are looking for the next one. It's not just going to sneak up. Oh, no, no. It's going to come. It's going to come. Is there a lot of pressure for you, though, you feel? No. I don't feel like it's pressure. I feel like it's me finding the right team. Because music is different from nowadays, from back in the day. Back in the day, you could put a, music, um, a song out, and it was just like, nowadays, you have to prepare before you put a song out. You got to... 20 day, 21 days prep, you gotta hit the DSPs, you gotta hit the Apple, Spotify, YouTubes, and all these other shit before you put a song out to get it on these playlists, to get it on these shade rooms, all those other shit. So I tell independent artists that it's not like, don't, don't, I'm, I'm not gonna have you sitting there just leading, leading, running into a, um, how you say that, a brick wall. I'm gonna tell you to play. You know what I'm saying? And then you make your play. And then once you make your play, that's when you'll see if you are talented or not. 
and you'll see if people like you, see who like you for. See, my whole thing is I'd rather 200 real people than a thousand fake people. Because now I got a thousand fake people and it's like I got to do a whole bunch of other shit. The 200 people is going to be there forever and ever and ever. The thousand, they're going to fake people, they're going to be here for four or five years and they're going to go to somebody else. And then they're going to go to somebody else. And then it's going to be a next. So you want that real long time forever, ever, 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 ever. Do you feel as as old as you seem? No, because like listening to- Sometimes after I get out the gym. Because listening to you, listening to you talk, man, you know, it's almost, and your your personality is so that you can tell it's not sour grapes. You can tell it's not hating. Like it's all true, authentic thoughts, but the conversations you're having about your business, about your lane, about what you do for a living, is the conversations people our age have about our sport. Like I'll watch football and I'll be like, yeah, that's not it. Or that's not, that's not what we did. If I was playing, I couldn't be this way. Or I couldn't do those things. Yeah. Listening to you talk about the rap game is, is like hearing that. But bro, you're still in your 20s. Like growing up, I had no friends my age. So that's the thing. I was like, I was like 10 years old with people that was like 30, 28. I was like four years old with people that was like 14, 18. I was, I was the youngest. My friends was always like 1990, 80, 89, 80s, 84. Some of them was 78. Some of them went to school with my mama. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I was like real smart in the hood where I used to sell drugs where I was 14 and I was running like the drug houses. I had four or five employees working for me. Drug houses, they was all older than me. I had guys that was 30 something used to come to me and ask me to help them move this, this, that. I was very smart and I know how to treat people. So it was like, I was always like, cool. And you say you, you made plans. You got five, 10. Give me the 10 year plan. Where, 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 is, Bobby, oh. where is Bobby Smurda in 10? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you, uh, uh, I can't tell you the 12 year, uh, the 10 year plan, but I'm gonna give you a thing, a hint. It started with a clinic and it's gonna end with something bigger. So what does eventually Akil Pollard has to be who we know, who we see. That's the guy that's gonna sit in, in the boardroom. I like my name, I kill Pollard. I kill Avalon Tyreek. They put me as Gene on Google. What, what the hell this name came from? <laughs> I like my, my mom gave me good name, Avalon Tyreek. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, a while back, we were at Notre Dame. And we're at Notre Dame, and Channing was making fun of people, right? And when you're at Notre Dame, you're not gonna name the kids what you name the kids at Howard University, right? He's not, he was, so he wasn't like, yeah, Jerome and Dontarius and Leroy. He was like, there's John and there's Tyler. Tyler. And then he said, and there's Bobby. How in the hell you pick Bobby? Like you don't have, the nothing, nothing about you says Bobby, bro. Nothing about you. Okay, so I was a little bad boy back in my days, you know, a little, a little. I was a little bad boy back in the days, you know? <laughs> and when I was transitioning, I was trying to transition to this money stuff. I was getting a lot of money. I was starting, I was, when I was in the streets, I was getting like $5,000 a day. I was making money. I was making good jokes doing money. But I was trying to put it into like real estate. I kept telling people all the time, like, I want to go into real estate. I want to go into cars. I want to go to the dealership. I know, I know guys that my OGs, when I was young, they, they sold drugs and they took it. They put, made, um, real estate out of it. They made um, um freaking, they got a whole car lot, you know what I'm saying? They sell this, that, and they, I know a whole bunch of stuff like that, um, clothing lines. So I was always telling that. So when I was trying to transition my name, Chewy, I didn't like the name because people would be coming up to me, talking to me, they know they was talking to me. They're like, yeah, this guy named Chewy, ah! I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's black ass over there. They're like, what's your name? I'm like, Bobby. <laughs> I was like a little, I was a little famous in the streets before I turned Bobby Schmurda for the wrong things though. You know what I'm saying? And I would tell people no, because how did they, they never explain the story? You know, there's always two, three sides of the story. Right. You know what I'm saying? So the thing was, I was never a guy that looked for trouble. I just finished it, but the way I finished it was not good. So I learned how to finish it a different way. I told you, I just walk away now. You know what I'm saying? I don't give them my energy. I don't give nobody. Nobody can say something and just make me jump. Or nobody can. Back in the days, I, they had that power over me. That's what I was mad with until I turned 23, 24. And once I learned that, I had that power. Like, you can't just say, oh, bitch ass nigga, I'm laughing. You. What the fuck wrong with you? You having a good day? How <laughs> <laughs> wrong with this motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> well, you think about it, right? And then you become free now. Right. Right. You become free. You got to kill the animal in you. I had to kill that. I had to kill what was in me, what was holding me back. 
and that was the line that animal that 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 er the pride or whatever that called it. I had to kill that, and once I killed that, I got to see everything free. I had to see everything more. Yeah. So just being Bobby is just like a change. I, I killed was just in a lot of trouble, and Chewy had a bad name. So I just like Bobby. Once people meet Bobby, they be like, oh, I ain't nobody worried about Bobby coming over. You know what right. I'm <laughs> so aside from the uh, the autobiography, right? Aside from that, are there any plans to do a movie, bro, or a- ah. acting? Because you, I can see you playing yourself. I'm reading, or I'm reading, I'm reading scripts. A whole lot of. I'm reading scripts right now. Yeah, it's yeah. coming. Can you be something other than this, though? Other than what? Like, your personality is so big. Like, I, I think. Like Denzel is the the greatest black actor of our era, our time. But he just turns everything into Denzel. Mm-hmm. Like he's just like I watch Macbeth and everybody on Macbeth had an accent, and Denzel sounded like Lonzo from Training Day. You know, you know what I'm saying? No, but it was still passionate. But it, it was hard. It was passionate. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, Den, you know, Glory Denzel is it, 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 like the, it's just Denzel. Fighting in the Civil War, you know what I'm saying? If you got Denzel on anything, training day Denzel. That's Denzel, that's the bad cop. You know, uh, remember the Titans, that's Denzel. A that's a co- Yeah, flight. flight, that's just drunk flight. pilot Denzel. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Are you gonna, are you gonna always give us Bobby Smurder or we might see you with a little, little drama, a little they leading have, man? I'm, have, I'm an adventurous person, so I like doing new things, so I'm always see what I could do. And I, instead of it come out looking like I've been doing it, I've just been pimping since 92, but I was born in 94. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> but I, I like I like adventurous. I'm going to try everything. I ain't going to lie. I like to try things. So I'm going to try it. I'll try like different roles. I'll try a cop role. I'll try a uh, superhero role. I'll probably be a funny superhero. <laughs> <laughs> what about Usain Bolt? You got you know Patwa? You Jamaican? Patwa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do some. I can do some John Patwa. Yeah, you I'll can do, do some Jamaican Usain roles. Bolt, yeah, I bought my thing there, so I mean, yeah, I recognize. No, you fast as hell. Yeah. You play sports I, coming up. Do any sports? So the thing is, right? This is the funniest shit. I'm athletic, but not athletic. You get it? I'm athletic, but I'm not athletic. <laughs> How's that? I got a lot of energy, but I can't structure like the point and stuff. I'm like, I like Court, go, you lack coordination. I like go, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, like I'm clumsy I'm, feet. Yeah, I'm wild. It's wild. <laughs> track will be easy because you just run in a straight line. Track. <laughs> I didn't play no sports, but he's running. Let me ask you a question, though. Like, honestly, what is it? What is it? Um, who was it that we were talking to and we said like every time, he said every time they go somewhere, people try to put a battery in their back and make them do something. Or like comedians, every time, like Chan, like every time we're somewhere with Chan, as I soon as they meet him. Duval, right? Yeah, he, yeah, Duval said that he, they want him to be a comedian every, t- every time. When you have a dance, when you have a dance like you did, right? When people see you, do they always do the dance, or do they want people you to do? People always do the dance, or I just I just hype them up and get them hyped to do the dance. Sometimes if I'm tired and I don't feel like doing the dance, I'll have, I'll have them hype them up and do the dance. They'll do the dance, then they end up still making me do the dance. So I, <laughs> I, I, they'll do it so much it makes me do it. Like ah, fuck it, I'm gonna do it with you. <laughs> <laughs> so when you fell over, when you fell over the couch or a uh, million dollars worth of game, and, and, you, and your feet kept doing the dance. Without you, it was just that's just what happens. Once that I tell you, I, I'm person. I don't start shit, but I'll finish it. Uh, <laughs> when I get started, I don't know how to stop. So I just be, yeah, you know I'm saying. <laughs> so, this, so this will be my last question for you, bro. Because you, I mean, you have spoken this whole time like an OG. If there are people in the game right now that you respect and that you would do music with, who would those people be? See, I enjoy music, so how I keep it sometimes, I don't. I don't look at like their whole background. Like one of my favorite artists, besides DMX, some of my favorite artists, I think I don't know their whole full names. You know, I didn't ever look that thing. I just looked at the art and stood at the art. So a couple of people I do want to do music with right now. Look, I think like pop so I be listening to a lot of pop now. I want to do a leap and Adele. Do a leap and Adele so bad. I want to do a song with do a leap and Adele. I got pop songs. Y'all want to hear my pop songs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, I'm just going to be honest, man. Like, this was, like, for us, so off the beaten path, but legitimately, man, one of the most fun episodes we've ever done and also super enlightening. Bro, we appreciate you just taking the time to sit down with us, man. Is there anything, like- but I think we always ask this question, and I know you can flip it to this mode. The show is called The Pivot. 
because we all got here by making a pivot from being somewhere else. If you look at your life and all the trials, tribulations, the adversities, the successes, what is the one moment that you would say was that pivot that created the Bobby Smurder we see today? Um, the pivot was 2014. When I got into the business, I learned that music wasn't just my end game. Music is not my end game. Music was something I got into to open more doors to get where I needed to be, to do what I needed to do for father extension of um, business and stuff like that. So I love music, don't get it twisted, but I just, I can't do one thing. I gotta do multiple things. I got a lot of energy, you know? Like when I used to sell crack, I used to sell crack, babysit, sell counties, do this, had these people over here doing it. Always, I was always an active person. So like, I'm just an active person, but me just doing it now and everything legal is different now. So now it's like, that's the shit I can brag about. Cause everything I had before was illegal. Everything was, I was doing illegal. Yeah, I was making money, but it's different. Now I can make that money legally. It's like, how would I say that? It's like a breakthrough. It's like a breakthrough through, um, how would you say that, that word? Um, statistics, that boom. <laughs> so being statistically, you know, being the statistics, I think that's a challenge. I like challenges. Like when I was young, I used to like to fight the biggest person outside. So now I like to fight the biggest mind state where they say I can't do or I can't do. And that makes me like, you know how a girl gets you hard? That makes me hard. <laughs> and that actually makes sense though, to, for you to finish the show talking about statistics because statistically you should be in the pen, you should be dead, you should be broke, you shouldn't be an inspiration, you shouldn't be a story that deserves an, auto, an autobiography that has a positive present and future. So, man, we appreciate you, man. Appreciate your journey, appreciate dog. Yes, sir. That joke was great, dog. <laughs> <laughs> that was great, dog. Sorry, hey. I let him go, bro. I know your dad, Drew. I'm sorry, bro. I'm real talk, like man. You're funny shit, bro. Hey, <laughs> I didn't know Drew liked to dance, man. <laughs> Wait, was he to pick it up? It's a little shy. You <laughs> little shy, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. no, 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 no legal. This is legal. This is going to make everybody say shit. We got to go. Going to real estate. <laughs> that was close, awesome, man. man. Appreciate yeah. you setting that up, bro. Thank you, bro. Thank, well, Thank you so much. Yes, sir. That bro. joke was great, it. dog. Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cow, pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Get my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. On the mission, get me up. Knowing me, I got the key. On the vision, I can trust. Trust. Limitless. Take a stomach cow, pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Get my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up.